and Florida Congressman Michael Waltz. He's a member of the House Republican China Task Force. Congressman, thanks so much for being with us. I want to get your reaction to this story, what you just heard from Congressman Swalwell as well. Well, that's incredibly rich coming from uh, Congressman Swalwell, who sat at uh, Schiff's right hand during the entire impeachment investigation, the leaker in chief uh, that was coming out, just flying out of the, the intelligence committee as they were going after the president. But look, the, the point I want everybody to understand today is that the country is flooded with Chinese communist money. This is a much bigger and pervasive problem. It's in Hollywood, it's in think tanks, it's in journalism, it's in Wall Street, and it's certainly going after progressive politicians like Swalwell. They went after Senator Dianne Feinstein and put an operative in her, uh, her campaign. And these aren't uh, and now we're getting reports of John Ossoff in Georgia uh, that was taking anti-democracy money uh, from from a linked uh, entity in China. And these aren't members, progressive members on, you know, the shoeshine committee. They're on intelligence. They're on Senate intelligence. They're on House Armed Services. And I think we need an, we need to take a hard look at how they're voting, uh, how they're voting vis-a-vis -vis our defense bill, our intelligence bill. And as we go, you know, and really truly take on what I think is the greatest threat this country's ever faced in the Chinese Communist Party, how they're viewing it and what they're saying. Congressman, you bring up such a great point. You actually sit on that China task force, and it's a task force that Nancy Pelosi refused to put right. any Democrats on. What does that tell you about the Democrat Party hmm. and, and whether or not they truly are beholden to China and can't be really um, uh, fair when it comes to issues that, that involve China? Well, the sad thing is that she had initially agreed with Speaker McCarthy. This, this should be a bipartisan issue. The Chinese Communist Party... Uh, is in a cold war with the United States. Just look at President Xi's speeches where he talks about replacing the American dream of freedom and democracy with the China dream around the world of repression and kowtowing uh, to, the, to the Communist Party. And that's the issue here. And we just had uh, Vice President Biden this year say the rise of China is no big deal. It should happen peacefully. We can all get along with this notion that if we're just nice to them, they'll be nice to us back. That's not what their leadership's saying. Their Navy is larger than ours. They're launching more into space than the rest of the world combined. They're flooding the zone in the United States with money in a way the Soviet Union was never able to do to influence all of American society and around the world uh, to eventually, again, kowtow to Beijing and how they see the future not us. And I'm not going to have my grandchildren grow up in a world led by Chinese communists or for that matter, the United States led by Democratic Socialists. And that link there is something that should scare every American. That is a link. It's a, it's a, it's a very fair point. Uh, you know, we talked earlier about how the Hunter Biden story was suppressed before the election. Well, we're now learning that there's a Hunter Biden investigation uh, in Pittsburgh that's focused yeah. on his dealings with China and with Burisma. Um, where does that go? Should there be a special counsel? Talk to us about this development. Well, there absolutely should, particularly what I'm watching. This is a... This is a President Trump appointed U.S. attorney in Delaware uh, that could be replaced by an incoming Biden administration. There needs to be a special counsel in place to ensure that we get to the bottom of it because it's absolutely clear big tech isn't going to help. Mainstream media isn't going to help. And Democrats have been saying nothing to see here. But right now that we're post-election, uh, then, then suddenly we're going to cover the story. Congressman, you, along with 127, 130 other members of Congress, signed on to join the Texas lawsuit questioning the election results in several states yeah. across this country. The Orlando Sentinel has apologized for endorsing you, I believe, right, for backing That's this right. election lawsuit, which was just rejected by the Supreme Court last night. Here's what they wrote. I want to read it to you and our viewers. We apologize to our readers for endorsing Michael Waltz in the 2020 general election for Congress. We had no idea, had no way of knowing at that time that Waltz was not committed to democracy. Our bad. Congressman, your reaction? Well, they also called me a coward and said I was dangerous uh, uh, to the country. Last I checked, guys, you know, trying to settle a, a dispute through an electoral system through the courts is exactly what our democracy is all about. Pete, you and I have served in places 
where they don't have a court system, where, where elected leaders who disagree are mobilizing people to violence in the streets. Mm -hmm. I signed on to an amicus brief because I think there were real constitutional Article I, Article Three. Uh, 14th Amendment issues uh, in Pennsylvania and Georgia in particular that our Supreme Court should hear and should rule upon. That's what democracy is all about, is settling things in the judicial system. So to tell me now that I'm a danger, uh, you know what, Orlando Sentinel Board, you can keep your endorsement uh, and, and suppressing people and suppressing people who are trying to use the court system peacefully, that's what's dangerous to democracy. Thank you, Congressman. It does sound quite civil, so um, not, not very dangerous to take it to court. So <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much Appreciate for joining it. us um, and for all, all right, you do. Thank you. Hey, go Army. Beat Navy. Amen.